Me. So she took the phone and she said, if you're looking for Marcus Hill, he's not here. Try his baby mother's house, that would be her, his ex-wife's house, his <laughs> other girlfriend's house, because this player has been caught. He's not here. Correct. <laughs> Pretty much is what she said. Not I'm nice. I'm for a job for Not an actionable. Not professional. Not actionable, sir. You know what that means? That means that you can't sue for that. Because she say, it's her phone. She took it back. She paid the bill. And she put the message on, go find them someplace else. <laughs> she didn't say that you had a disease. She could have said some other horrible things about you. She said, you know, players gotten caught. Where do you come from? North Carolina. So since this courtroom is in California, I assume that you flew in yesterday. Yes, ma'am. With her. Yes, ma'am. What hotel did you stay at last night? Holiday Heights. And what hotel did she stay at? Holiday Heights. Same hotel. What room did you stay in? Um, two eight. And what room did she stay in? Two eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> what she's saying mm -hmm. is not exactly out of whack, right? She's saying go look from someplace else. The cheaters gotten caught, so you got caught. Anything else you want to tell me, sir, okay. before I dismiss your counterclaim? Okay. Actually, also, she also would stop me and ride back and forth, and she put rose petals on the truck. She would wait till I get off work, watch me at the gym, and then she would follow me through the night and where I went. She loves then I, you. Oh, she love, loves you. Love psychotic. <laughs> she loves you. And also, she told me when I told her I would pay the cell phone bill, no problem. Just get my phone back, and I said, I still pay it. And she said... Don't, don't worry about it. Forget about the bill. That's what she said, and that's well, what I'm I did. I'm telling you, she doesn't want to forget about the bill. So you're going to pay the bill and your copay so that your mother could sleep easy, that you didn't have diabetes, $171. <laughs> your counterclaim is dismissed. Goodbye. Good luck. Have a happy life. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Step out. <laughs> she did a lot of that. That caused me pain and suffering. I sat down at a table with four different women in one night that had all been dating him for the last probably three or four months. Putting rose petals on my truck. Rose petals were just very simple. It was one rose. It was next to his truck, uh, letting him know that I know where you are. Leaving a message like that when I use the job, use the phone for a job phone also. When your man that you're in a relationship with really starts to drastically change, there's something that's going on. And if he can't tell you the truth, maybe sometimes you have to make sure that you know what it is. That's what it boils down to. Exactly right. Like right. Just keep going. Just because there's one bad person in the world doesn't mean they're all going to be like that. Todd, don't get no phone for no other one. And now the next case. All parties in the matter of Pierce versus March. Step forward. David Pierce is suing his ex-girlfriend, Catherine March, for stopping payment on a check. David is also asking for punitive damages due to fraud. Mr. Pierce, you and the defendant lived together for how long? Approximately two years. It is your claim that when things went south and the relationship was finally over, the defendant and you reached an agreement. And that agreement was that she would give you $2,000 in sort of moving costs. And you were going to take that $2,000, take it and go and find another place to live. She wrote you out a check. You did, in fact, move out. So far, am I correct? Well, the $2,000 check was for the damages caused by her children regarding the assault as, of course, they needed money to move out. Mr. Pierce, that wasn't my understanding of the $2,000. Of course, you do say that a couple of years before, one of her children assaulted you. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that, sir. If you didn't press charges or pursue that matter two years ago, Because happen, she asked me not to and promised fine. to compensate me down And then you continue to live road. together, sleep together, travel together, eat dinner together, we're intimate together. So I am totally disinterested in what happened two years ago between you and any of her children. Do we understand each other? David Pierce says ex-girlfriend Catherine March owes for stopping payment on a check and for punitive damages. It's my understanding that this $2,000 was for you to relocate. You took the money and she stopped payment on the check. Now you're going to explain to me, Miss March, why you put a stop payment on the check so that I understand it. But let's go back for a moment. When was it that Mr. Pierce and you made a judgment that the two of you were going to separate? February 4th. Is that correct, Mr. Pierce? If she says on the 4th, yes. She wrote me the checks on the 5th. Just a second. Was it the 5th, or shall I take her word for it that it was the 4th? That was one of many times that she wanted to end the relationship. Mr. Pierce, we're talking about the last time when she gave you the $2,000. Don't play with me, sir. It's irritating. Was it on the 4th, the 5th, or don't you remember? Best of my recollection, on the 4th. And the agreement that you made was what, Miss March? Your Honor, on February 4th, 
one of many times I was very frustrated with Mr. Pierce. I don't care. I wrote him a check just to get him to leave my home. It was not in payment for anything. It was in compensation, really for nothing. Fine. So you wrote him a check in order to get him to leave your home. Yes, Your Honor. And he did leave your home. We made up that evening. Just a sec. Don't play with me. Goes for you, goes okay. for him. You wrote him a check on the 4th. Yes. He left. When he left on the 4th, what did he take with him? He left on the 5th to go on a trip with business. He did not take anything with him. What's the date on the check, Mr. Pierce? February 5th. So on the 4th, you gave him a check dated the 5th, apparently. When he left with the check, what did he take with him? Only the things he would take normally on his business trip. We made up that night, and we had decided he was not going to leave. Is that correct, Mr. Pierce? Yes. Then you went on a trip. Yes. When you came back from the trip, where did you go? I came back Look from at me. the... When you came back from the trip, where did you go? I actually stayed that weekend in my truck. After she gave you the check, sir, did you go back to the house? No. When you say you made up, Miss March, what do you mean you made up? He got on his knees that evening and proposed again. He spent the night you... with me. And what did you say? I agreed, yes. You agreed what, yes? To marry him. And then what happened, Miss March? The next evening, while he was out of town, he called me and over a minor issue started screaming and yelling at me again. At that time, I told him, I'm done. Please do not come back here. You do not live here anymore. Good. Fine. When did you cancel the check? I believe it was on February 6th that I called the bank. May I see the check, please? So according to what you're telling me, the check was written on the 5th, because that's what it says. It's possible it says that I put the date of the 5th. The I wrote it on the 4th. It says the 5th. Okay. And you put a stop payment on it the next day. I believe so. You had a contract. Let me explain to you your contract. You lived together, you shared certain expenses, and you told him, according to you, you started to go into how frustrated you had become with him over the course of the relationship. And this was just one of the last times you became frustrated with him and gave him $2,000. So either you have no mind or there's something wrong with you because after you gave him $2,000 to get out, he came back and he got on his knee and he proposed to you and you accepted. So there's got to be something wrong with you if I'm going to believe that story. But that being the case, the next day you call and you put a stop payment on the check. So what you did was you got him out of the house. I assume you changed the locks and you said, bye, now I got him out of the house. Now I'm going to call the bank and cancel the check. You can't do that. That's out of the question. You had a contract. He complied with the terms of your contract. He left. You owe him $2,000. Now. You want to give me 30 seconds or less on this punitive damage nonsense you want for $3,000, Mr. Pierce? Colorado law statute provides for civil situations such as these for check fraud, since it was a fraud in the inducement to get me to leave to write the check, that it's at the judge's discretion to allow additional damages up to three times the amount. Good. I choose not to do that, Mr. Pierce. Okay. Got $2,000. That's what you bargained for. That's why you left. That's what you're entitled to, judgment for the plaintiff, and the amount of $2,000. That's all. By your excuse, you may step out. <laughs> David Pierce is a very angry, volatile man. Sometimes people make accusations when... Hopefully I will make better choices in the future. They can't answer the question correctly or accurately. I actually feel very sorry for him. It must be very lonely to be David. It is what it is. This is a man who lost his dental license. It was revoked because of anger issues. She's wrong. I was afraid of him. He was uh, with my mom for two weeks, and then he started yelling at my little brother and sister. I told her after the assault, I have zero tolerance for any of this stuff in my life anymore. He got in my face and I told him like I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stick up for myself and I pushed him. I realized I could not marry a man as volatile as David. When we were without children the relationship was reasonable with her children there was a constant friction. My sister was 15 and my brother was 13 at the time and they don't deserve to be like yelled at like that after two weeks of knowing them. Her son has a history of substance abuse. I just told him look if you're gonna yell at someone yell at me. I think that affected his